for me, I'm only interested in one thing. I'm only interested in the thing that is binding us all together. No matter what you do in this room, no matter what your profession is, an entrepreneur, work for an agency, designer, developer, no matter what you do, always and forever, our job is to tell our story. And that is never going to change. The way you make real money, the way you make real impact, the way things get changed is by great storytelling. It's always been that way and it always will be that way because I don't know if you guys heard, but we're fucking human beings and that's what we like, right? And this is important. It's important for you to think about what I just said there because really we need to reverse engineer what's actually happening. And that's what I spend my time doing. Not knowing how many of you know me, my whole career is predicated on reverse engineering what I think is gonna happen in the next 24 months because that was still practical, right? Yes, I know we're all gonna be robots eventually, but that's 40, 60, 80 years out. I'm worried about 24 months out. And my biggest problem right now, in general, is that I feel that the far majority of people, businesses, organizations, media companies, all across the board, are storytelling like it's 2007 in a 2014 world. And that's all I ever think about. See, what I spend a lot of my time now in doing is figuring out how to storytell in micro moments. That we live in the greatest ADD culture of our time. That we have absolutely no time. I'm obsessed with the notion of how do I tell you my story when you take out your phone and you do this, right? That's what we now do. We don't sit on a couch where we don't have a remote control like it was 1982, Right? And we were able to tell that story because the audience was captive, right? We were too lazy to get up. And unless you were going to make popcorn or take a piss, you were gonna see our story, right? Now, we live in a world where we have obnoxious amounts, unlimited amounts of outlets to do what we wanna do on our time and how we wanna do it. We live in a world where people only wanna watch TV now, where they watch the entire season in one night, right? That's, <laughs> I mean, that, like, that's how we roll, it's on our time. How many people here I'm, this is gonna be a lot of fun for me and I'm gonna block the lights. How many people here by show of hands and don't half ask me or head nod me, give me your full fucking hand? How many people here get pissed when somebody calls them? Raise your hand. <laughs> Let me just tell you something right now. Thank you for the lights, keep that on because I like their faces. 70% of this audience just raised their hand at the thought that if another human being calls them, <laughs> they're pissed and annoyed. You know why? Because we've gotten to a place where everything now is on our time, right? You watch the show when you wanna watch, not because it airs on Wednesday from eight to nine p.m., right? You, t you like texting because you can respond to that person on your time. We're in control of the one asset that we all give the most fuck about, and that's time. And with that, that has created an awfully interesting challenge to actually storytell in the reality. We're living in a world, heard, we heard, a few minutes ago that campaigns are everything. No, campaigns aren't everything, right? And it was funny, I actually think they're both, right? I don't think a lot's changed when you really think about it. I just think that what social networks have done and mobile devices have done is they've created a gateway drug to awareness. That's how I look at it. You know how I look at Instagram and Snapchat and Vine and Facebook and Twitter? I look at them like they're weed, right? You give somebody a little nickel bag and then later you can sell them a ton of Coke, right? So. <laughs> So that's how I look at it, right? How do I story tell on social and give you something that you can consume very lightweight and quick? Oh, by the way, the way that we all actually roll, the way we actually consume information now, which is in hyperspeed, and this takes a totally different art. When I think about the creatives that I work with, you know, VaynerMedia, the agency I run, we've gone from 20 to 280 people in the last 18 months, right? And a lot of them are very qualified. In the first 30, I made sure nobody ever worked at an agency, right? I wanted to have that DNA. But now we're obviously hiring extremely talented creatives and things of that nature. And I'm trying to break them down, to be honest with you, because what we're living through is a very big culture shift in storytelling. See, we've just lived through the last 70 years, as I'd like to call it, movies and docs, right? Heavy thinking, a lot of prep work, a lot of things, heavy, thick, heavy. Now we're living in breaking news, right? The skill set to be a great breaking news storyteller versus being a great movie storyteller is quite different. And not that the movie thing is dead. I actually don't think in a social media world that stuff doesn't work. I actually think it works just fine. I just don't think it works as the only thing we can do now. And so we have this other avenue where we have to start respecting the nuances of the platform. I have 200 people who spend their entire day's lives 
thinking about how to actually market and storytell where our eyeballs and ears actually are. Because they're not in the places where a lot of companies and entrepreneurs spend their time. Listen, I'm not gonna pick on outdoor media, print, radio, television. That's just too easy. I'm gonna pick on digital. Let's talk about Google AdWords, down 15% in the last year in click-throughs, reported by Google, down, digital. Email marketing, I built my first business, my wine business on email marketing. How many people here have email marketed in their careers ever? Just raise your hands, just try, great. Let me, let, me, let me blow your fucking face off. Do you know what my, do you know what my open rate for winelibrary.com was in 1996 with a 400,000 person email list? 89%, right? You know what happened to email marketing? The one thing that I know more than the sun is coming up tomorrow, that marketers ruin everything. <laughs> As a proud marketer, it's what we do. When something new comes out, we try to figure it out. Go look back at 1995 to 2000 click-throughs on banner ads. 10%, 20%, 30%. Now, if you get .01, you're a hero. Marketers ruined it, right? Email marketing really collapsed in the, five, in the last three, four years. Why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because Groupon and Living Social. Let's talk about them for a half a second. How many people here, by show of hands, signed up for Groupon, Living Social, or Daily Candy? Raise your hands. Okay, good. Love this crowd. Everybody. Do you guys take, go back with me for a second. Do you remember four years ago how you couldn't wait to get $40 of fucking sushi for 20 bucks? <laughs> that it was the best thing that ever happened to you? That you couldn't wait to get that $80 spot treatment for $40. Well, what happened? You hate it now. You know why? You all unsubscribed and deleted because they started giving you more stuff that you didn't want. Now you don't give a shit if they're offering you a million dollar house for 100 bucks, you're like, delete, spam, unsubscribe. <laughs> And the same thing's happening in social, inevitably, but then you start looking at why Facebook, in my opinion, Facebook's the worst PR company in the world. Like, Facebook should fire everybody in their PR department because they are positioning themselves so poorly when they're actually executing on the future of storytelling. Now, they're getting a little rogue because they're getting excited about their stock price and pushing a little too much to the paid, but the fact of the matter is the notion of we are not great at self-policing the content we see and we don't unsubscribe. You're still following people on Facebook that dated your best friend four years ago. I mean, it's just what we do. We don't unsubscribe, right? And so the notion of letting the best quality content get to you based on your actions is going to happen. Whether the edge rank algorithm's right, whether Pinterest or Tumblr or somebody else, or Twitter clearly needs it, comes out with their own and it's better, that's up to the science nerds. I'll let the mathematicians take care of that horseshit. What I want us to focus on is this, which is one thing. Quality storytelling always wins, always. And what we need to do is one major thing, and this is where everybody gets fucked up. Everybody thinks it's about the content. And all the action right now is in the context. Let me explain. Everybody looks at social networks, and this is probably the smartest thing I'm gonna say, so maybe if you're gonna pay attention, just listen to this one statement. Everybody, 99% of the people out there, and I spend all my time looking at all this stuff, are looking at social networks as distribution. You're doing something somewhere else, and then you're using the tweet to drive towards it. You're using the Facebook status update to drive towards it. We default into thinking that social networks are distribution because we treat it like email. To really win in the world that we're all about to embark into, we need to start respecting all these platforms. And when I say social networks, I'm just using that as a general term to any websites where people actually spend time, right? Any, and, and even better if we actually have an ability to create a profile on it and be part of the conversation, right? And so we have to start respecting the context and the nuances of the room. When you start looking at the data, which gets a little math nerdy even though I dissed on it, I spent plenty of time on. When you start looking at if you have the exact same thousand people on Facebook, the exact same thousand people on Pinterest, right? You post the same exact thing at the same exact time and they act completely different, that's when you start understanding how much the context matters. Because the one thing we are not doing anywhere close to enough in our space, us smart people that are in this awesome room, the one thing we are not doing enough of is respecting the psychology of why people are in where they are at that time. This isn't social network sites, this is Facebook, this is Pinterest, this is Instagram, this is Vine, Tumblr, on, they're very, very, very different. When you are on Facebook, that's an all-encompassing awareness around your social graph. When you're on Pinterest, your psychology is intent to buy or aspiration to buy. You need to be storytelling 
differently in those platforms. We have to be giving them different visuals that are mapped to the psychology, not to the number of users that are there, not to why, we need to be why they're there, not how come they're there. And we have to really start focusing on this because when you start looking at it, the one thing that is really deteriorating in our world is the amount of time we have. Everybody's pounding at this one asset. It's the one asset that none of us are gonna get more of and the battle, the supply and demand of attention is completely out of control. Completely, listen, if any of you grew up in Jersey or drive through Jersey, you know that I love outdoor media. Building up Wine Library TV, I put up billboards of myself, mainly because I had that commute from New York and I just like looking at myself. I've got an ego like that. But, I love outdoor media. It brand this, that, and the other thing. I've stopped being excited about outdoor media because I was looking around and I've got something for you guys to all do. I know probably a lot of you live in the city, but the next time you're out of it or you're driving, do me one favor. Remember this talk. And when you're driving, look at five people. And I promise you, three of them are texting, right? Oprah's right, it's dangerous out there. It's getting real dangerous out there, right? So, my friends, outdoor media. My clients are spending hundreds of millions of dollars trying to tell stories on billboards. Meanwhile, customers aren't looking at billboards. They're not even looking at the fucking road anymore. <laughs> and this doesn't take into account the fact that we have self-driving cars coming. You think you're gonna be looking at billboards? You're gonna be fucking working. We're gonna be fucking eating and talking and fucking chilling, I don't know. You know, and so, we're living through a major culture shift and the only thing anybody in this room should care about that is the same for everybody is where the eyes and ears of everybody are. That's what matters. Attention is the only commodity. It's the only asset, excuse me, that we need to be paying attention to. And our customers, and we know this because everybody here is living it, we're doing different things. We're looking at more mobile devices. We're, we're playing cops and robbers with advertising. Go look at the normal person that uses YouTube a lot. When they open up YouTube videos, they open up 14 tabs to let the ad run and then they go back and actually watch it. And so like we have to get out of this stupid thought of awareness and we have to start getting to emotional attention. Are we actually bringing them value? Do we actually talk to them about what they want in these spheres? It's not about pushing advertising, it's about bringing value in the sphere. Why does somebody like to go to Tumblr? Because they like fucking animated GIFs, so give it to them. Right, and give it to them in a way that a human being would give it to them, not a brand, and be smart about it. And then in general, you know, on this thesis, from a business standpoint, I'm writing a new book, it's called Jab, 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 Right Hook, right? And the notion is give, 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 ask. Give, 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 ask. The real funny thing to me in the world right now is that everybody's full of shit, right? And, and what I mean by that is when you look at people tweeting or Facebooking, they're trying to disguise their ask by being witty, right? Meanwhile, the one thing I know more than anything is that our collective bullshit radars today compared to 15 years ago are dramatically better. And the kids, fuck, their bullshit radars are excelling. They just, like, they just know it, right? So what I've been testing a lot of and believe a lot of value in is jab, 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 right hook. Give people value and funny stories. Give them an animated gift that just makes them laugh, right? That just makes, say happy Monday. It's fine. You don't need a business objective for every piece of creative. Because we live in a world now where it's not just about campaigns where you do two or three of them and you spend all your money. You live in a world where we're doing it every day, a lot of it. And so we have the freedom, the creative freedom to actually act human and bring a little value to them. Bring value, bring value, bring value. Respond, engage, bring value, make it funny, make it newsworthy. And then let's all become grown-ups once and for all and recognize we can ask for the business if we're just authentic about it. A funny thing happens when you give a fuckload of value up front. You guilt people into buying shit. <laughs> and so like give value, give value, act human, do the right thing, answer, be there for them, have good, everybody on like Twitter, everybody thinks you have to be funny on Twitter. Like funny is like the one characteristic that works up. Everything works on Twitter, it's a human platform, but the problem is most people don't want to be self-deprecating or, or have empathy or, or be kind. Like, it's, there's not that many, and nobody wants to put it out there. They think they want to put out something that gets retweeted. How about we listen instead of talk? People like that. Think about the friend that you would rather call instead of the friend that always calls you, and then think about who you want to hang out with, right? And so we have to act human, we have to bring value, and then you say, value, 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 and then you say, buy my fucking book. Right? And that's kind of the science. You know, boxing is known as a sweet science. That's why I use this metaphor for the title. It's how I think. I'm spending all my time and energy and I highly recommend whatever energy you're spending on this, you spend more because the attention 
the eyes, the ears of our consumers, they're clearly going in these places. They're clearly going in these places. And if we do not figure out the art and the science of how to actually storytell in them, not use them as just distribution. Realize how stupid it is to use the same picture on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. Realize that. Understand there's a real science in this, a real storytelling battle going on right now in these platforms, and understanding that you as an individual act differently when you go into a boardroom in a business meeting than you would when you go with your girls to Las Vegas for the weekend, than when you would when you go out with your boyfriend. You're still the same person, but the context of the room changes the way you storytell. Thank you.